Justice Triumphs. Police Headquarters, Chicago, Illinois. Name, James Morgan. Age, 53 years. Cause of death, arsenic poisoning. Classification, murder. Investigation, proceeding. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents another thrilling case from the files of True Justice Stories, followed by millions of readers each week in the New York Sunday News and its syndicate. Tonight's case, Poison for Profit. Our story begins in a cheap neighborhood nightclub on Chicago's west side. It's the usual tawdry, smoke-filled, dimly lighted room, complete with checkered tablecloths and the inevitable postage stamp dance hall. A few minutes before nine o'clock, a sportily dressed man carrying a small suitcase brushes past the hat check girl, steps up to the head waiter. Ah, oh, good evening, sir. Hi. Well, I find Mitchell. Mitchell? You mean the boss? Uh huh. Yeah, that's right. The boss. Uh, are you the party from New York? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's expecting me. I know. Go through those black curtains. Uh-huh. This office is the first door on the right. Yeah, thanks a lot, Chum. Hello, Mitchell. Well, Dave Loomis. So you finally arrived in town, huh? Finally is right. I had half the cops in New York looking for me. So I heard. Yeah, yeah, they uh, had a dragnet out after me. I took watch my chance to sneak through. I'm glad you made it. Sit down, babe. Thanks. You'll be safe here. You can sleep upstairs and operate from the club here. Mm Mm-hmm. That sounds okay. You won't even need to poke your head outside. Unless you want to. (laughs) Hey, don't worry. I won't. Just in case the Chicago dicks have been tipped off to pick me up. And, um, while you're cooling off here, you can do a little work for me, babe. Sure, sure, why not? Uh, what gives? I've got a brand new angle. Yeah? Is it good? It's so good, I'm thinking of branching out. Maybe Frisco or Los Angeles. Ah? Uh-huh. When I do, I'll need somebody to run this place. Ah, yeah, see, that sounds okay. What's the angle, Mitch? Well, here. Take a look at this cardboard box. Huh. It's my poison. Isn't it? Yeah. Now look at this uh, card index file. Uh-huh. Now read what it says on this first card. Go ahead. Okay. Mamie Morgan... Husband, James Morgan, died May 24th. Feech charged for service $800. Fee due May 30th. But it's today. And I'm marking it paid in full. We just collected the 800 from Mamie Morgan. <laughs> well, I'll be. <laughs> Quite an angle, huh? Sure is. And a bunch of cards you got here, I, I take it you put certain parties out of the way permanently. For a consideration. That's right. How does it work? Come on, give. How do you bait the hook? Clara does that very efficiently. Clara? Yeah. There's a Damon on this, too. Oh, yes. We couldn't operate without Clara. She uh, starts the ball rolling, circulates around the club, poses as a, a fortune teller. Yeah, it's neat. Yeah, Clara's smart. She spots the married couples that aren't getting along, see? Yeah. You'd be surprised how many of them aren't happy together. You mean your peddler services to married couples that ain't happy? Mostly. Uh, or sometimes we run onto a client who wants a relative put away so they can get hold of an inheritance. That's an assignment that really pays big. How about that? What a sweet racket. Yeah. If you want to catch on fast, babe, yeah. just keep your eye on Clara. Watch her close. You'll learn how this business works. <laughs> Yes, sir. Step to the door and ask Detective Ryan to come in, will you? Yes, sure, Chief. Ryan. Yeah? Lieutenant Campbell wants to see you. Okay. What is it, Lieutenant? I just received this wire from headquarters in New York. The detective bureau says they believe a party named Babe Loomis may be here in Chicago. Babe Loomis? Yeah. New York wants him for being mixed up in the numbers racket. Is a description they sent along. You better read it before I turn it over to Pat. All right. Babe Loomis, age 32, height 5'9", hair sandy, blue eyes, light skin, identifying marks, thin scar on right cheek below eye. Likes to wear loud sport clothes. Mm-hmm. Pat? Yes, sir? 
I want you to get copies of this description out to every man on the force. Right away, sir. And Ryan, I'm assigning you directly to the job of finding Babe Loomis. Right. If I were you, I'd cover the west side first. Sounds logical. Fugitive hiding out in Chicago always seemed to head for the west side of town. Well, we got plenty of company over there. Oh, and Ryan, another thing. Yes? You look like a flatfoot in that blue suit you've got on. Well, it's... You better wear something a little snappier. Look like one of the boys. Your fortune told. Would you like to have your fortune told? Past, present, and future. Your fortune told. And look, Ada. That's the girl I was telling you about. Clara, the fortune teller. Oh, my head. She's beautiful. Yeah, isn't she? And I understand she can really tell things that are going to happen. Well, go ahead. Call her over. That's what we came here for. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, Clara, would you come over here, please? Oh, good evening. Uh, my husband wants his fortune told. All right. But I uh, usually concentrate better when I'm alone with the subject. Oh, You want me to leave the table? If you don't mind, I think I could do better. Go on, Ada. I'll tell you what she says. Oh, all right. I'll visit the powder room. All right. Well, Mr. Carter, I see you brought her in. Yeah. Well, that's what you told me to do, Clara. I'm not exactly enjoying her company. Mm, I could see that. Now, if it was my girlfriend instead of my wife, we always have fun here or any place else. Mm-hmm. I understand. I understand a lot of things, Mr. Carter. Just keeping my ears open in this place. Yeah, you're a wise cookie, I guess. But look, why did you want me to bring Ada in here? Well, I wanted her to meet me. That's important. Yeah, why? Listen, last week I overheard you and your girlfriend discussing your wife. Mm, Yeah. You were trying to think up a way to be rid of her, get her out of your life. Yeah, but but she won't give me a divorce. Yeah, I know. I overheard that, too. And I told you I know someone who will help you. Help me? How? Well, there's a way you can get rid of your wife permanently. Get rid of her permanently? I think you understand what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I do, but but I, I don't want to hang for murder. No one will ever suspect you. That's guaranteed. Yeah? Say, this sounds interesting. Mm, I thought it would. Well, uh, how, how much will it cost? How, how does the thing work? Look, Mr. Carter, you take your wife home now. Yeah? Come back later tonight. I'll introduce you to the boss. He'll explain everything. Detective Bureau, Lieutenant Campbell. Lieutenant, this is Ryan. Yes, Ryan. How you making out? Oh, not so good, Lieutenant. I've been hanging around corners over here on the west side and ducking into Crook's hangouts, but there's no sign of Babe Loomis. Well, keep on it, Ryan. Sure, I am. I've got a lot more territory to cover yet. But the reason I called, Lieutenant, was about something else I ran into over here. Oh? What's that? You remember my friend Jim Morgan? Jim Morgan? Sure. You remember. He's the guy who dropped into the office for a chat with me about two weeks ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Nice guy. What about him? He's dead. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. You know, the Morgans live over here on the west side. Yeah? Well... I just dropped into one of the neighborhood bars here looking for Loomis. And the barkeep just told me Jim died last week. Very unexpectedly. What happened? That's what I wanted to know. So I telephoned Mamie. That's his wife. She says Jim died suddenly of acute indigestion. Pretty tough. Yes. But the thing that strikes me is this. Why didn't she notify his friends when he died? I'd like to have gone to his funeral, but I'd never have known about it if the barkeep hadn't told me. Yeah, well, that is strange. And another thing. I happen to know that Jim and his wife have been on the outs for a long time. Hey, now, wait a minute. Do you mean you suspect foul play of some kind, Ryan? I don't quite know how to figure it, Lieutenant. All I know is that a couple of weeks ago, he was healthy as a horse. 
And now he's dead of acute indigestion. Acute indigestion? Yeah. I wonder... What's that, Lieutenant? I was just thinking. Maybe your friend's unexpected death bears looking into. I was wondering about that myself. How do we go about it? I'll talk to you about that later, Ryan. Right now, you stick to your assignment. Try to locate Babe Loomis and report back to me regularly. Okay, I'll do that. Goodbye. Bye. Oh, Pat. Yes, Chief. Come in here, Mayor, will you? Yes, sure, Chief. What's on your mind? Pat, uh, didn't we get an anonymous letter last week or a week before uh, hinting that there was a poison ring operating somewhere here in Chicago? Poison ring? Oh, yes, sir, yes, sir. The letter's right over there in the file. Get it for me, will you? We sure thing with them. Yeah, here, here it is, Lieutenant. But, but it actually don't say nothing, if you remember. Thanks, Pat. Let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah, I recall now. Yeah, this letter didn't give us a thing we could work on. Hey, why are you so curious about this here letter all of a sudden, Lieutenant? I think maybe Ryan's run across something that corroborates what the letter says. You don't say so. You mean real evidence? Could be. Pat, get me the coroner on the wire. Right. Got a little job for him to do that should settle this question once and for all. Hey, Mitch. Hmm? You say you got another sucker on the string? Yeah, babe. Yeah. You better stick around, keep your ears open. You'll see how we handle dopes like the one Clara's bringing in in a few minutes. This guy she's got hooked to. Does he have any money? That don't cut no ice in deals like this, babe. No? If they want to get rid of something bad enough, they find the money. If they can't find it by themselves, we got ways of helping them. <laughs> <laughs> you got everything all worked out, ain't you? We've been in the racket long enough. It must be Clara now with the guy I was telling you about. Swell. Now I can see just how you're doing. Yeah. Come in. Hello, Miss. Hi, Clara. Uh, Mitch, I, I want you to meet Mr. Edward Carter, a friend of mine. Well, it's a pleasure, Mr. Carter. Oh, well, I... Come on in, take a chair. Yeah. Thanks. Have a cigar, cigarette? No. No, no, no thanks. I, I, I don't smoke. Relax, Mr. Carter. We're all friends here. We just wanted to help you. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> Mr. Carter, I understand you're interested in... Uh, and having a certain matter taken care of. Well, well, that depends. Well, first, Mr. Carter, there's a matter of a fee. How much cash can you raise? Oh, a couple of hundred, maybe. <laughs> Look, Mr. Carter, we don't operate for that kind of chicken feed. As a rule, when we run into a customer who can't raise enough cash, we suggest taking out life insurance on the party to be disposed of. Well, my wife's already insured. Good. That'll speed things up considerably. Uh, how much insurance does she carry? Well, $2,500. Well, then I'd say our cut for doing the job ought to be uh, an even thousand. How's that? Well, that's okay, I guess. But, but wh what do you do for that dough? Uh, we give you this, Mr. Carter. This little packet. Here, here, take it. Feels uh, like... Powder of some kind. What is it? Carter, that powder is very special. It's going to buy your wife a one-way ticket out of your life. Now, wait a minute. I don't know about this. <laughs> Who gives it to her? You do, Mr. Carter. Oh, no. no, no. I told Clara once tonight I, I don't want to hang for murder. <laughs> I guess you don't know the reactions of this particular powder, Carter. No, I don't. How, how could I? She'll get this powder here the first day in a moderate dose. It won't kill her, but she'll be ailing and her stomach will be upset, see? Every day the dose is increased a little. Every day she gets a little sicker. It'll take about a week or so. Then she dies. Indigestion. Acute indigestion. Oh, I see. That's a pretty good idea, but... How do I get her to take the stuff? Easy. Your wife's not very attractive anymore, from what I hear, huh? You said it. But she's still crazy about you and would like to hang on to you, huh? Yeah, that's right. Then it'll be a cinch. We'll tell you exactly what to tell her when you give her this powder. If you follow our directions, she'll take it with no trouble at all. This is the case history of an actual crime, one of a series of murders by poison. 
Crimes so cold-blooded and calculating that they appear almost unbelievable. But let me assure you, poison ring racketeers preying on the baser elements of human nature have operated in cities all over the world for many generations. Now, in this case, justice has been put on the alert through a number of circumstantial events noted by the keen intelligence of Chicago's crack police detective Lieutenant Campbell and Detective Ryan. The routine search for the fugitive Babe Loomis has opened up a much more important line of investigation. Campbell speaking. Lieutenant, I have the autopsy report for you on um, James Morgan. Good. Let's have it, Doc. Well, we found almost a grain of arsenic in the man's stomach and liver. He died of arsenic poisoning. Arsenic, huh? Mm-hmm. That's right. Well, thanks for the fast work, Doc. You bet. Well, Pat, did you hear that? Yeah, Chief. See, that was pretty smart, ordering an autopsy on Morgan j- just on a hunch like oh, that. It was more than a hunch, Pat. Yeah? The symptoms of acute indigestion and some kinds of deadly poison are very much the same. Oh, so that was what gave you the tip-off. That and the anonymous letter. Well, what are we waiting for, Chief? Well, let's go out and pick up Morgan's wife and book her for murder. Well, now, wait a minute, Pat. Not so fast. We have no evidence to prove she poisoned him. Well, I know that, but we can't... And if she hired the services of a poison-for-profit ring, they'd skip out the minute we nabbed one of their clients. Huh. Yeah, I guess you're right. Now, that's a big fish we're after. We can pick up Morgan's wife any time. Yeah, but, but, Lieutenant, how do we get a line on a racket like that? Well, the Hall of Records should be able to give us a lead. I think I'll go over there right now. Mm-hmm. And, Pat. Yes, sir? When Ryan calls in, give him the autopsy report on his friend. Tell him we seem to be on the trail of a poison ring. Okay, sir. Ask him to meet me at noon in front of the Hall of Records. I'll take another cup of coffee, Ada. All right. I'll get it for you. Ed, you're going to be late for work this morning if you don't hurry. Yeah, yeah, I know. Ed... Why did you go out again last night after we came in? I went out to do something for you. For me? What? Well, you remember what you said just before the fortune teller sat down to our table last night? Why, no, not exactly. Well, you remarked on how pretty she was. Oh, yeah. Oh, my, i give anything to look like her. Well, you, you can, Ada, hmm? if you want to. Oh, Ed, but what's got into you this morning? Nothing. What, what do you mean? Well, you've been so, so kind of pleasant. Oh. Now well. you're flattering me, saying I could be as pretty as that woman in the nightclub. Well, you can, Ada. Mm-hmm. I, I found out the way. That, that's why I went back there again last night. Oh? I found out her secret. What keeps her looking so young and full of vitality. Um. You know, Ada... Your, your looks are all still there. You, you need to have them brought out, that's all. Oh, Ed, honey. You really do think about me and love me. Why, sure I do, Ada. Maybe I don't show it like I ought to always, but well, you know I do. That's why I want you to look your best, so I, I can show you off to my friends. Oh, oh, Ed, you make me so happy when you talk that way. I, I'd do anything to make you proud of me again, like when we was first married. Well, that's why I got this little package of medicine for you. Medicine? Yeah. For me? Yeah, that's right. Is this the beauty secret you was telling me about before? It sure is. But does it work, Ed? Well, sure, it must work. Well, just, just look what it did for that woman in the nightclub. Oh, you mean Clara? Sure. Well, they tell me when she first came to work there, she... She was all run down and thin, and she looked as homely as well, anyone you ever saw. Now she's so beautiful. Oh, if I could only look like her. Well, you can, honey. Here, now you take this package. It'll do the trick. Oh, oh Ed. Thank you, honey. Oh, thanks a million. Oh, that's all right, Ada. You take it the way the directions say, and, well, it, it'll make me very happy. Oh, I, I will, Ed. I will. Oh. Feels like a powder of some kind. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> a, a beauty powder. Oh. Now, you'll find the full directions inside. You start taking it tonight, uh-huh. according to those directions, and in a couple of weeks, 
You'll never think about being homely again. Hi, Lieutenant. Okay, hop in, Ryan. Yes, sir. I got the message you left for me, Lieutenant. Uh-huh. What's up? Pat said my friend Jim Morgan was poisoned. That's what we discovered. Well, I'd like to lay my hands on the person who did it. Well, you're going to get your chance, Ryan. I've got a job for you to tackle, a big job. Good. Do I drop the vague Loomis assignment? Ah, uh, you can do this job and keep your eyes open for Loomis at the same time. Both assignments are in the same vicinity. Okay. What's the pitch, Lieutenant? Well, I've just discovered some very interesting data at the Bureau of Records. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Too many people on the Lower West Side have been dying of acute indigestion. So you think it's a racket? I do. Has all the earmarks of one. Yeah, there's a list of deaths and the dates on which they occurred. Mm-hmm. Hey, they all died within the past few months. That's right. And you'll notice that the cause of death in each case might also be a symptom of poisoning. Yeah, so I see. So you want me to keep this list and question the nearest survivor? Keep the list, Ryan, but stay away from the nearest survivor, the husband or wife, as the case may be. Question relatives and neighbors only. Okay. What tack do I take with the questioning? Well, find out if they have any suspicions of foul play in the death of their friend or relative. If they have... Question them about the nearest survivor. Mm Mm-hmm. I get it, Lieutenant. Find out how they got along with the deceased and so on. That's right. I figure if the deceased persons on that list are the victims of a poison racket, there'll be a clue in the information you get that may lead us to the racketeers themselves. Sure, that makes sense. All right, Ryan, you better get out here. Can't be seen too near that district in a police car. Right, Lieutenant. Now, keep in touch with me, Ryan. I want to know everything you find out. Yes, sir. And good luck. Now, in this reenactment of the Poison Racket murders, Detective Ryan rings doorbell after doorbell seeking information, questioning friends and relatives of the deceased persons on his list. And always among the answers he gets, there runs an identical thread of information concerning the nearest survivor. Well, officer... Just before her husband died, she became very friendly with some people in a nightclub. Uh, the husband's habit since his wife died? Well, well, I don't know much about them, officer, but uh, well, I do know he used to visit a nightclub on, on Oak and Cicero. Picking up a hint here, a suggestion there, Detective Ryan slowly but surely uncovers a path that leads to Mitchell's neighborhood nightclub. Not knowing exactly what he'll find, he steps into the tawdry club and is seated at a table. Soon he's approached by Clara. A few minutes later, Babe Loomis passes by the detective's table, studies the customer a few seconds, then rushes back through the black curtains to Mitchell's office. Mitch! Yeah, Babe, what's on your mind? Give me my gun. It's in the bottom drawer of your desk Take there. Take it easy, Babe. I thought I made it clear to you when you first came here. Nobody carries a rod in my club. Give me my rod! There's a cop out there. Cop? Where? Out there at one of the tables. He's talking to Clara. You mean that big fellow in the gray suit at number three? That's the one. <laughs> you scared me for a minute, babe. That fellow's just another customer. Now, look. When he saw me, he knew who I was. He's got that... that copper look in his eyes. Oh, uh, babe, you've been dodging dicks for so long, you think everybody's on your trail. I'm telling you, Mitch. I'm telling you. I know. Okay, okay. Here's your gun. We'll go out and keep our eye on him. Detective Bureau, Lieutenant Campbell speaking. Lieutenant, this is Ryan. Yes, Ryan. I've spotted Babe Loomis. Good work. I also think I've got a line on who's responsible for the death of Jim Morgan and the others on that list. Nice going. There's a phony fortune teller in this club here where I am now. Her name's Clara. We've been talking, and I told her about a rich old aunt of mine who's going to leave me a fortune when she dies. She suggested she knows a way to hurry the process, so she's taking me back to meet the bosses and get the details. And I think one of the bosses is Babel. Brian! Brian, where are you? Brian, what's happened? What a break. 
Pat! Pat, come in here. Yes, Chief. Hey, what's up? Brian just phoned in. He's telling me he had a line on that poison ring when something happened. What do you mean? He was cut off in the middle of a sentence by what sounded to me like a blow. Oh, it looks like trouble, huh? Yeah, serious trouble. Get me the emergency desk on the phone. Yes, sir. We're going to need help from the motor patrol to find him. You, you mean you don't even know where he is? No, he didn't tell me. But from what he said and the piano music I caught over the wire, he's in a nightclub somewhere on the west side. A nightclub that's got a fortune teller named Clara. Pat, we've got to locate that club. Let's bump this flat foot off now and get it over with. That's what I say. We will. When it comes to... What are you waiting for? We've been sitting here for half an hour now. I told you I want to find out how much he knows. I heard him mention my name on the telephone. Sure, isn't that enough? No. I want to know if he knows anything else. Maybe he ain't caught on to our racket. We oh, have, Mitch. I read his fortune. I already mentioned a way to get rid of his rich aunt. Oh, sister, are you a dope? Oh, how'd I know he's a copper? He didn't look like one to me. So he does know everything. That's different. we got to get out of here before the police pick up our trail. Clara, get the fire cars together. I have to take them out and burn them. Okay, Mitch. This is one dick who's through snooping once and for all. Give me your gun, babe. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Keep out of the way, Clara. Reach for the ceiling, all of you. It's a cop. No, you don't, baby. Give me that box of stuff you got there. Better say where you are, all of you. Hey, Lieutenant. You made it here just in time. You all right, oh. man? Yeah, I've been playing possum. They thought they knocked me out cold. Oh, what's the idea busting in here Shoot me in the arm. You'll find out soon enough. Chief, this box I took away from the dame, it looks like a file on all their customers. That's what it is, Lieutenant. Uh, This card right on top here says there's a woman slated to take arsenic and her milk tonight before she goes to bed. Her name's Ada Carter. Here's her address right here on the card. Those cards don't mean a thing. They don't prove nothing. Maybe. Pat, call that woman right away. Or better yet, go to her house. Maybe you can catch her before she takes it. Sure thing, Lieutenant. Brian, put the cuffs on these people. Boy, is this a pleasure. I haven't forgotten that sock on the head. Come here, you. We're taking them down to headquarters and booking them on suspicion of murder. What happens to them after that is up to the courts of justice. Now, as the police reach Mrs. Ada Carter in time to prevent her name from being added to this fearful murder list, the events in this poison racket case draw to a swift close. Mitch, Babe Loomis, and Clara are indicted on a murder charge. The files Mitch so carefully kept revealed the names of 17 people who had used the services of the poison ring. These 17, too, were indicted for murder. All were found guilty, the ringleaders as well as their customers. All but Clara, who left town and became a fugitive from justice. Justice decreed that the 17 should spend the rest of their lives behind bars. For Mitch and Babe Loomis, the maximum penalty was measured out. Death in the electric chair. And so it is now that at police headquarters in Chicago... Ryan. Yes, sir? Remove James Morgan's card from the active file and mark it case closed. Justice triumph. Although the names of all persons, characters, and places are entirely fictitious and any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental... This dramatization was based on an actual murder case. Next week at this same time, the Mutual Broadcasting System will present another dramatization taken from the files of True Justice series appearing each week in the New York Sunday News and its syndicate. These programs are produced and directed by Jock McGregor. The story is dramatized by Bart Conry, and the narrator is George Carson Putnam. Clara was played by Nancy Sheridan. Detective Ryan was Don Douglas, and Lieutenant Campbell was Ralph Camargo. Others in the cast were Sandy Strauss as Babe Loomis, Maurice Potlin as Mitch, Mrs. Carter was Joan Shea, and Pat was Humphrey Davis. The orchestra conducted by Emerson Buckley played music written especially for this broadcast by Richard DuPage. Frank McCarthy speaking. This program came from New York. For another exciting drama, stay tuned now for Scotland Yard, starring Basil Rathbone as Inspector Burke. You'll hear the case of the lady killer in just a moment. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.